or it's like practicing scales it's like the same shit in like every discipline and like just because some people can get away with not doing that doesn't make that not one of the most optimal ways to learn again adjusting for learning style and things like that if you like if you really want to like make this like long-term improvement this is what i suggest if you want to like play the game mostly for fun or casually like I wouldn't sweat it too much, right? Like, there are other ways to go about it. But that's my recommendation for, like, I want to improve as fast as possible. What do I do? It's like, you have to be willing to just straight up tank 50 games to learn one concept. Okay, so I think I have a good game plan. So, what we saw in this across all three is there is an option you have in mind in advance that is taking over autonomously, right? What we can do is between matches or watching, like, like, do you watch a lot of Asuka players? I used to. So, like, if something isn't working or you have an idea of what you want to do, moving to that part of the step where you start implementing it is first you, like, have to, you have to first put it in your mind that you need to do it, right? So, like, it's easy after the fact to be like, oh, I should have done this. Oh, I should have done this. Well, that doesn't really help us implement it, right? So, first thing is... Let's come up with a plan to actually get this done, right? So, for example, I'm can canning everything and it's not working, or I want to stop can canning as much. So, Sync proposed that one option is where you can can can, tell yourself you're going to do down back one. And then when you go into a play session, whether you're doing player match or ranked or however you want to do it, that is your focus for that. Because if you want to focus on winning and this and punishing and that, it's going to be too much. It's really hard. Yeah, so pick a set of games where you're just going to do that. Sync was referring to this matchup, I think, with Steve specifically, where you're getting jab floated, and down back one would have worked. So what you can do is go into a next session and plan that. Where I want to can-can, I'm going to tell my hands to do down back one. If I lose, it doesn't matter. If I do this, it doesn't matter. And whether that means you play in, like, casuals or, like, not ranked, that's fine. It doesn't really matter where you do it. So, that will be, like, making the plan. And then, like, assessing. Uh, like, when did it work? When did it not work? And this is how the delinking of, man, that felt good to hit versus this is good to do and will win me more games is how it's done. Um, and then the next thing is, like, how do we come up with what is good to do? That's where the watching thing comes from. So, watching, uh, I would watch, like, Commander, Be Bias, uh, Dimeback. These are just off the top of my head. I don't actually know, like, many good Asuka players. I just, like, these are the names I can think of off the top of my head. If I were learning Asuka, I would watch them, see what they're doing, and then see what situations would, like, you can put yourself in that match. Like, stare at the opponent and be like, what move would I have done here? What move did they pick? Uh, maybe I can try doing what they're doing. Does it work? Does it not work? And then that's how you come up with the plan, like, where am I going to change in the first place? Oh, yeah, Fergus. How did I miss Fergus? Jesus, I'm trolling. But that makes sense, right? So, so um, phase one we already kind of did. It was like Sync told us down back one is good. So phase two would be, okay, where do I want to use down back one? Everywhere I do down back, or everywhere I do can cans. Then I'm going to go into a set of matches and only do that, or only think about that. In practice, it's going to feel different. You're going to be like, oh, I'm thinking about this and that. But, like, try to think about it that way. Like, make that your intent for whatever session you're doing. And with that kind of intent is how you make the improvements you want to make. Because otherwise, if you go in with, like, kind of split focus, like, I want to rank up, but I also want to get better at this, but I also want to get better at this, it's really easy to get stuck in autopilot, to get frustrated, to kind of lose your mind in different focus and different things. I was playing Law. Let me pull up on the screen. I was playing Law, and I was so focused on ranking up that I just kept doing the same stupid shit that got me killed over and over. What was I doing? I was, um... Because I play Noctis, so approaching is no issue. Um... Welcome to the I, play, I play Noctis, so approaching is no issue. Seven. But... Law can't get in as quickly and easily as Noctis can with just 2-2. Two -two. So I was freaking stuck at, like, Mighty Ruler, even though my Noctis is whatever. Like, True Tech God, former TGP. No, uh, humble brag. But, <laughs> like... My law just couldn't get in. I was getting blown up. I was getting kept out. Stuff like that. So, if I kept playing the way I was playing just to rank up, I might eventually figure stuff out, but I wasn't solving the fundamental issue, which I, I didn't know how to get in. So, I talked to... I watched other laws. I talked to, like, Reno Face at the time because he happened to be watching. And he was like, oh, back to. But what I did is I stopped trying to 
slide, stop trying to win, and I was just like, I'm gonna find places where back two is gonna hit and get me in there, and then I can start playing my range zero game. And that was my improvement for the day, and I demoted like three times. But now, like, once it normalized out, like, later in the, later in the week, I came up to Eternal Ruler. So, your rank... The decisions you make to get better aren't going to immediately translate to rank. I'm sure you know that, like, from playing League and other games. But yep. it's generally those decisions that will pay off in the long run. And navigating that delayed gratification is really hard. Like, I'm somebody who's all about instant, like, my need for dopamine is crazy. So, I definitely get, like, the, a, the habit of hitting something that feels good or hitting a setup that feels really good. Um, it takes a lot of intent to break that. And how you start breaking that is making a session just dedicated to breaking that or multiple sessions that makes sense yeah 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 so i would say if you were to go forward from here and you wanted to do that because like there's no need to if you don't want to but if you really wanted to break these habits it would be pick a session where you're only going to do down back one versus uh do uh can cans um pick a session where you're going to uh where instead of parrying you're gonna just try to like backdash. That's just an example. Um, right. Pick an example. Uh, pick a session where instead of doing forward two as keep out, you use down forward two or while standing three or back three. These micro decisions, aggregated over a long time, but done practiced in very focused sessions, is how you make these changes. It's like how, like if you do any kind of like martial art, they make you do the same kick like fifty times in a row, and it's like because you're not the man that's practiced a thousand exactly. kicks once. Exactly, and we've all heard it, but it, like it always feels shitty to do it times. until we do it. Or it's like practicing scales. It's like the same shit in like every discipline. And like just because some people can get away with not doing that doesn't make that not one of the most optimal ways to learn. Again, adjusting for learning style and things like that. Chris Walker, thank you so much. I appreciate the follow and I'm glad this content is something you like. But yeah, so first, if you like, if you really want to like make this like long-term improvement, this is what I suggest. If you want to like play the game mostly for fun or casually, like I wouldn't sweat it too much, right? Like, there are other ways to go about it. But that's my recommendation for, like, I want to improve as fast as possible. What do I do? It's like, you have to be willing to just straight up tank 50 games to learn one concept. And in this case, oh, it would... Yeah. yeah. So in this case, it's if your goal is to get rid of the can-can habit and only do it on a read, it's like you have to spend X amount of games just removing it from your repertoire or substituting something for it. So would you say that it's more worth it to get punished for... Like if I if I have like a like a read that oh I feel like he's going I, I have a read that he might go low here like it's better to get punished that oh he went mid as opposed to like oh uh, he's dashing in my face what do I do can cans uh, you say like that's the better idea there so so situation is he's dashing in your face and you want to know whether or like you know like because I, I I mentioned like oh well like. The situation doesn't matter, but like I feel pressured because that's usually that's where I lose games is because I can't can't because I feel pressured. Right. And I don't want to get out. So I would dig in. I would dig into my answer to that would be we need to identify what the pressure is. So it sounds like in this case, somebody dashing in your face when health is low, as one yeah. example. There could be other examples. And the antidote to like autopilot based fight or flight fear is well, there's many, there's many solutions. One solution that I like to do is enumerating what our options are and really boiling that situation down so it's not an endless like void of possibility like if i told you that it comes down to a coin flip and you literally cannot control it outside of guessing would that be less scary would that be more scary i don't know what the objective answer would be for you but That's why to me I'll never forgive the Japanese. if it opens up my mind to be able to answer other things so like if I told you that you literally either low parry or stand block, and that determines the rest of the game, sometimes that's all you can do. So if they're dashing in your face, can-can is a complicated thing because it covers lows, it covers slow moves too. But if I told you you can't can-can, you have to guess mid-low, that might be one option. That might be one option for delinking this habit that you want to address. I know that's kind of a roundabout answer, but... No, what it, I, it's, it's good advice. Yeah, it's, it's good advice. that's what I would say. So... Um, to answer your question, one approach to stopping doing can-cans when you're feeling pressured is commit to, I'm going to input low parry, I'm going to stand block. 
Another answer is what Sync suggested is every time I want to do can-can because I feel pressured, I'm going to try down back one and try hit confirming it. Or I'm just going to do down back one in general. And then if that starts working, I'm going to spend the next session working on hit confirming it. You don't even have to do both at the same time. But yeah. Do you have any other questions? I think that's a good amount. Uh, we're chilling. Yeah, that's, Sweet. That's, that's good. Yeah, I I'm hope that already, helps. I'm already starting to work on some stuff. Perfect. I hope that helps. And uh, as always in the Discord, just like pop in with questions if yeah. you ever have something. And like, uh, yeah, I hope that helps. And oh, yeah. I'll probably that throw this on YouTube as well. Yeah. yeah. That helps a lot, actually. All right. Sweet. Have a good night, man. All right, man. You have a good night. Thank you. Ooh, okay. Thank you so much, Madmail, for subbing. And Lamella Davis and Crisp Walker. Thanks so much, you guys. Uh, okay. I should probably close this queue. People want to play me still? What's going on? All right. Who? Who wants to play me? Stupid bot. <laughs>